Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about making photorealistic 3D assets. So for today's video, I have a small asset making process for you. I originally made this for a 3D character that I never managed to finish, but I did finish a few of her clothing pieces, and I feel like this could be a great demonstration for a beginner substance painter series. So in this video, I will show you the entire texturing process inside a substance painter for this punk necklace. The first thing we will do is to bake high resolution detail onto this uh, base geometry that we will be texturing on. And this is the sculpting I have. For this asset, there's no real high resolution detail. The only thing I had on my sculpting was just the edge of the leather. Otherwise, everything else looks basically exactly the same as the low resolution. Even if we don't have real high resolution detail, we still have to go through the baking process just to get proper AO and proper curvature, everything we're gonna need to make good smart masks later. For the baking itself, I always leave everything at default. I find that in most cases works for me. Also, please be aware that I've done this asset a while back before the latest version of Substance was published. So uh, this version does not have the UDIM function. This is what the finished bake looks like. Just from the surface, uh, there's not much difference from the low resolution. It's just the uh, leather has a little bit of a better pumped edge. For the first layer of material, I'm going to use some kind of silver color metal. Uh, maybe some kind of steel. The texture I'm importing right now are mega scan textures. I just drag them into the viewport and I have to select uh, the type of uh, file that is and I have to import into current session. I decide to separate the metal part of the necklace into two types of different metals just to have a little bit more breakup. So this silver color metal is mostly for the ring in front and the two bolts you can see on two sides. So I'm creating a fill layer here and I'm going to drag all the texture that I just imported into its proper spots, which are base color, height, roughness, metalness, and the normal map. Once all the textures are in place, we can see the material in our viewport. Right now, this scan texture looks extremely clean and I definitely want to add more detail later on. But for now, the first thing I will do now is to create a mask for the area that I want the material to be at. So I'm going to create a black mask for that entire fill layer and I'm going to polygon fill and I will select the UVs that I want the material to be on. I kind of forgot where the ring UV is, so I'm gonna select it in my 3D view just a little bit, just so I know where the UV is in UV view, and I will select everything in there. So the next material I want to add is some kind of a yellowish metal, just to have some sort of color difference compared to this one. So I'm going to do either a brass metal or maybe a bronze metal. I'm going to repeat the same process I just did before. I'm going to import some brass metal material into my scene and uh, create a mask for the area that I want the metal to be on. Again, this material is looking a little too clean. I definitely need to add more detail myself later. All the metal pieces are in the same UDIM and most of the metals are uh, this kind of brass metal. So instead of uh, assigning a black mask and uh, assign the area I want the brass to be on, I'm gonna do reverse and assign a white mask and just gonna mask out the area that I want the silver metal to show through. The brass metal right now is definitely looking super boring. So I'm dragging in a few other base color textures and I'm gonna drag it into the same fill layer and just test out if a different texture is gonna give the brass a more interesting look. Yeah. 
In the end, I decided to use this texture that's not from Megascan, which means it does not have a height map. I had to create a height map in Photoshop, and uh, when I apply the height map, uh, the height is looking a little bit too strong. So I'm going to apply a adjustment, a contrast adjustment on just the height. Once I lower the contrast on that map, you can see the height is going to look a lot more reasonable. The height is looking better now, but it's looking pretty big for such a small object. So I'm going back to the original fill layer. I'm going to adjust the tiling of this map to make everything look like the correct scale. Now we're at a decent starting point for the metal. I'm going to start to work on the leather a little bit. Uh, as you can see, I have put my main reference inspiration in the middle of um, the screen. So I'm creating a new fill layer and I'm going to import some leather texture. I'm going to adjust the tiling a little bit. I definitely have to keep in mind how big this thing is supposed to be in real life. Once I'm more or less happy with the scale, I'm going to add adjustment layers onto my base color and start to tweak the color to be closer to the reference. The next detail I thought it would be interesting to have on this, although it's not on my reference, is stitching details. So I'm creating a new fill layer and I'm going to create some sort of a very basic fabric texture and I'm going to assign a black mask onto this new material and I will paint my stitches. Creating stitches is super simple inside Substance Painter. I just have to select brush mode and I have to go to alpha and there is a ready to use stitch alpha. I just have to drag it into my brush and then adjust the spacing in between and the size of the stitch. Make sure that on your brush setting where it says follow path, make sure to turn that on. So when you draw the stitch, the stitch will follow the direction of your brush stroke. The silver metal is still looking super boring, so I'm going to do the same thing I did with the brass metal. Gonna swap out some different colors and maybe add some different height maps and just try to make it look a little bit more interesting. The next thing I want to do is to start working on the edges a little bit. I want the edges to be the shinier part of the metal. So I'm going to create a new fill layer that only affects roughness. And I'm going to create a mask for the edge area just to add some shine to the edge. I'm going to try out some of the already made smart masks. Sometimes it's uh, faster to start this way.
I like how strong the edge is at the moment, but it's a little too solid and uniform. So I'm going to use some Substance um, Grunge masks to break up that solid edge. To do that, just create a new fill layer and drag the map into that fill layer. I will adjust the size of the grunge layer for a little bit and uh, blend it using Multiply. You can see in certain area, especially the ring shape and the bolts, um, the mask is covering way too much space. And those are the area I have to go in and paint it out by hand. After working on the edge, I want to focus on the center of the metal a little bit. So I'm going to create a new material that's much rougher than the metal itself. And I will focus on distribute this material in more like the flat surface of the metal. I also want this material to have a lot more maybe material detail because it's less shiny. We're probably going to see the base color a little bit more. So for this one, I'm trying out some textures that's a little bit more extreme and a little bit more detail on it. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to focus on creating a surface mask that's more focused on the center. It's always good to just look at the mask on its own just to know exactly what the mask is doing. This is not a bad starting point. It's pretty close to what I was thinking. So now I just have to go in and do more adjustments. This new material is covering up the edge we're creating before, so I'm gonna move the edge as the top layer and uh, add that shine back into it. Now I want to work on the leather a little bit. So far we only have one base material. So the next uh, material I want to add for the leather is uh, kind of like the wear and tear part of the leather. So I'm creating a new material that's uh, very similar to the base material. The only difference is the color. It's going to be a little bit desaturated, a little bit brighter to show the part of the leather that's been worn quite a bit. I also want to make sure that the spec for this new material is a little bit rougher. Now I'm going to assign a black mask to this new material I just created and start to create a mask for the wear and tear area. For me, uh, it's gonna be both on the edges and in the center a little bit. So I'm going to test out some smart masks and also I'm going to add few layers with uh, other grunge maps on top to combine something together that I think makes sense.
the last thing I did is to add some sort of overall dust layer on top of everything, especially on metal. I feel like that breaks up the speck of the metal nicely and makes it look a little bit more realistic. I'm adjusting the intensity of this layer. I just want a very light layer breakup. I don't want it to be too strong. So uh, for a certain area that is too much, I will go in and paint them out. And that is everything I did for this choker necklace. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It's a small, easy one. I'm currently working on something that's gonna take a little bit longer, but I don't wanna go on a few weeks without anything for you guys. So I thought this uh, small project can be interesting and educational as well. So that is everything I have for you today. If you like today's video, please subscribe to my channel and give the video a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next one.